Well, thank you very much. It's a frightening day for a South Florida grandmother. She was abducted and held for ransom. Finally, a police are investigating whether one of their own officers is to blame for a deadly car crash. A precious pooch that searches out missing people turns up missing himself. And now the search for him is over and the news is good. Plus, one area in South Florida is growing by leaps and bounds. We'll have the details to this story and much more straight ahead on the NBC6 News at 6. With more than 50 years' experience serving South Florida, this is WTVJ NBC6 News. Our top story, if you think people are only held for ransom in the movies, think again. Today it happened to a grandmother right here in South Florida. Good evening, everyone. I'm Tony Segreto. And I'm Jennifer Vallapi. Now, the ordeal started early this morning. Luckily, it came to an end this afternoon before anyone was injured. Now, police are trying to figure out why someone would do this in the first place, abduct a woman and hold her for ransom. NBC6 reporter Monica Morales begins our story tonight. She joins us live in Miami with all the details. Monica? Hollywood movie, but this one has a happy ending. 64-year-old Antonia Diaz held hostage inside a Liberty City motel room for nearly 12 hours. Tonight, they finally reunited with her family. I'm very happy we got our aunt. We're very happy. Thank you, Lord. Nothing else happened. We have her. The suspects kidnapped the elderly woman just outside her Miami home 3.30 Monday morning. After several calls of family demanding ransom, police finally tracked down the suspects. The victim is in is good condition, she's okay. We're gonna speak with her naturally and then she'll be reunited with the family as soon as she gets some medical care. The woman is expected to walk away from this unbelievable experience with only minor injuries. Meanwhile, close friends can't believe what happened to a woman they called auntie. We ain't sleeping two days, we were worried. Uh, we ain't know what they did with her, they were asking for a lot of money and... Yes, I see, I'm happy, I see her. How scared were you about her? Very scared, my aunt. And that grandmother only suffered minor injuries. She was at Jackson Memorial Hospital being treated, but she's been released just about an hour ago. The police are questioning her. They're looking for that third suspect tonight. And of course, we'll keep you posted. For now, we're live in Liberty City. I'm Monica Morales, NBC6. Monica, thank you. Meantime, a Sweetwater couple accused of torturing their 12-year-old son face more charges tonight. Ricardo and Josefa Davila appeared before a Miami judge this morning. Besides attempted murder, the couple has now been charged with kidnapping, child neglect, and aggravated battery. Police arrested them earlier this month after they say the Davila's whipped their son with electrical cords and even made him eat his own vomit. The trial is set to begin October the 2nd. A police officer heading to a call was involved in a deadly crash, and now investigators are trying to figure out if the officer is to blame. Patricia Andreu is following this story for us tonight. She joins us live from Hialeah with the latest. Patricia? And Hialeah Police is conducting an investigation into last night's fatal accident. The department says it's standard procedure for officers to run red lights when responding to emergency calls. But last night's response resulted in the death of an innocent driver. I feel so sorry for him so, because he was a good boy. Friends and family gather at the Hialeah home of Lázaro Rodríguez. The 28-year-old was killed instantly last night in a police-involved accident. Alexis Nodal was the last person to see Rodríguez alive. He stopped by Nodal's home for a few minutes to chat. He called his house, his wife, and said, prepare my food, I'm going home. He was chilling, you know? mm -hmm. no, nothing hairy, nothing. And we talked for 10 minutes, and after that, he left my house and was the accident. Hialeah police say Officer Jorge Rodriguez was responding to an emergency call when he ran a red light heading northbound on Palm Avenue, with his siren blaring and lights flashing. Rodriguez was driving westbound on 32nd Street in his Ford Explorer. They collided in the intersection. We answer calls on emergency mode every day by the thousands, and um, things like this can't happen. It's the nature of the business that we're in. Hylia police will not yet confirm the nature of the emergency call. They say Officer Rodriguez, who's been on the force for two years, is still on duty, even as the department conducts its investigation. According to Nodal, the victim's wife learned of her husband's fate as she stumbled upon the scene searching for him. His wife, uh, at one, 1 o'clock in the morning, they get out, they, they start calling to the cellular phone, and no, no response, and they, they go to the street, and they found the accident. And they stopped one block from there, 
and it saw the, the car. Rodriguez leaves behind his wife and three-year-old daughter, they're now preparing for tomorrow's funeral. Reporting live in Hialeah, Patricia Andreu, NBC6. Thank you, and there is some good news today for a missing dog and his owner. The dog that was missing from the Miami-Dade search and rescue team was found today. Police were unable to find the dog, so they turned to us, and last night we aired a story about Bruce, the missing German Shepherd. Well, after that newscast aired, a man called the rescue team and said that he had found the dog. The dog seemed to be okay, except that he was limping. I hope he saves a lot of lives. I mean, if I can make that impact, that's not what I was trying to do. I was just trying to help the dog out, but if that's what happens from it all, then the more the, more the merrier. Well, officials tell us the dog is doing great and should make a full recovery. Well, Miami-Dade County is already crowded, but now its neighbors to the north are growing rapidly. Business in Broward is certainly booming, as we know, and NBC6 is proud to be a part of that boom. NBC6 anchor Michael Williams joins us live now with more on this story. Michael? Southwest Broward is synonymous with growth in South Florida, and in the once seen and felt Miramar's motto is beauty and progress. Many like Gabriel Marinas come here from Miami Day. Uh, the prices of homes comparable to Dade County is not even not even close. These uh, houses are well built and uh, more affordable than they are in Dade County. There's still room to grow here, and a major road in I-75 means access to points north or south in sprawling South Florida. I do know all of this open land is just going to bring tons of people, but it's all sort of like new too, so I think that makes a big difference. The growth spurt in Miramar extends to businesses as well. NBC6, as you well know, is here now, and other corporate names include or will include Lucent, Royal Caribbean, and EDS. Handling the growth without being trampled is the challenge. Miramar Parkway sorely needs widening. It's slated for that to begin later this summer. Thank you. I'll see you. And at Miramar Police Headquarters, Mel Stanley is in his first day on the job as chief. The longtime Hollywood police veteran is meeting all of his people and already talking about the future. The challenge for the department is to flex and grow with that, that growing change as well. But for a while, at least, new residents like Gabriel Marinas hope they can put the familiar growth headaches aside. Here I figure I have another five or six years before I see that kind of, uh, I guess, hustle and bustle that I used to see in Dade County. From schools to roads to public services to many other quality of life issues, what will the Gabriel Marinas be saying in five or six years? Can Miramar and other cities like it make good on slogans like beauty and progress? From our new home here in Miramar, we'll be part of covering that evolving story. Tony and John. Michael, thank you. And as you just heard, NBC6 is contributing to the boom in Broward. We just moved to our brand new studios here in Miramar over the weekend. Notice anything new? <laughs> By now, you've probably noticed that our news is looking just a little bit different today. We are broadcasting tonight from our new all-digital main campus in Miramar. Here is just part of our studio. Our engineers are busy putting the rest of it together, still getting it wired up. As we speak, and you can see folks unpacking, helping us put the news together, and even a few workers who are putting the finishing touches on our building. Stay tuned, because in the coming weeks, we promise lots of surprises, including the work continuing at our uh, Miami campus at the American Airlines Arena. Mm -hmm. Well, with Broward getting busier, the roads may be more crowded these days. Let's find out how the drive home is looking today from Brian Freeman. Brian? Well, thanks a lot. It's not a real good go, folks. For 95 in the northbound, we're looking at a live picture of this multiple vehicle accident. Northbound 95 at sunrise, and it's a very, very, very difficult go from 595 and north into this. Only, as you can see, a lane, sometimes two lanes of traffic getting by. Anyone coming this direction is going to be greatly delayed. And on the flip side of this, just down the road a bit, we have another accident with a vehicle overturned, and that is at Davies. We take a look at 95 at 79th, the outbound direction, 95 Miami-Dade, running heavy. That's northbound side on the right side of the screen. Also, southbound 95, there is an accident at 62nd. Hopefully, that's going to be clearing fairly soon. Over to the Dolphin, a busy one for the westbound direction. If you're leading on to the Palmetto, though, you've got an accident northbound Palmetto at 36th, another one northbound at Bird Road. That's the latest from the Metro Chopper. I'm Brian Freeman. Back to you. Hi, Brian. Thank you. Meanwhile, tonight, investigators are trying to sort out the details in the crash of a twin-engine plane. It was headed from Fort Lauderdale to Chicago. One person died, two others were injured. The plane crashed into a densely wooded area right next to the Raleigh-Durham Airport. 
The Raleigh-Durham Control Tower says that they had cleared the plane for an emergency landing. Rescuers had to hike along a 200-yard hiking trail to reach the crash. Police had not yet released any names, but the plane was registered in Fort Lauderdale. Well, the President of the United States flies into Florida today. We're going to tell you why Mr. Clinton is visiting the Sunshine State. And what do politics and education in Florida have to do with each other? Well, more than you may think, the ABCs of this story is still ahead. Plus, if you like dolphins, you're going to love this story. We take a dive with the magnificent creatures and tell you how you can do the same. That story and much more coming up next. Stay tuned. The only station with more than 50 years' experience covering South Florida hurricanes is also the station with the most extensive network of media partners. Oh, Watch 2000. Bridge. Oh, Radio. Mega 1035. News Radio 610. Big 94 FM. Keys Talk 1300 AM. Television. WB39. Pax 35. Whammy. And the net. NBC6.net. Make NBC6 six and its media partners your only choice this hurricane season. NBC6 News is brought to you in part by your South Florida Ford dealers. I just want to celebrate, yeah, yeah. Celebrate all of life's little adventures with style, not to mention big savings. The Ford Authorized Clearance. Drive Ford Explore, America's best seller for nine years. Now with 15 cash cashback and zero non-financing. The Ford Authorized Clearance, now at your South Florida Ford dealer. I just want to celebrate. Get zero now financing plus 1500 cash back and save over $6,300 in finance savings now. President Clinton is making several stops in Florida in the hopes of helping the Democrats recapture one of Florida's U.S. Senate seats. In fact, the president attended a luncheon in Tampa today for U.S. Senate candidate Bill Nelson. He also attacked George W. Bush and criticized the GOP's prescription drug plan. The president is scheduled to arrive in West Palm Beach at any minute to speak at another Nelson fundraiser. And the Republican National Convention is underway in Philadelphia today. The GOP officially nominated George W. Bush and his running mate, Dick Cheney, took the president's part to represent the party. This afternoon, Bush's wife, Laura, practiced the speech that she'll be making tonight at the convention. Governor Bush will also address the convention tonight through a satellite television hookup. Well, as we all certainly well know, a hot topic with politicians is always education, and it's something that's definitely been on George W. Bush's plate. What you may not realize, though, is what kind of effect the Republican presidential candidate has had on Jeb Bush's education views. Education reporter Ed O'Dell joins us now to tell us how politics and education go hand in hand, certainly in Florida, Ed. Well, Jennifer, several years ago, the Republican presidential platform called for the Department of Education to be abolished. As the GOP opens Convention 2000, the party has changed its tune on education. The education reforms instituted under Florida Governor Jeb Bush bear a striking similarity to reforms in Governor George W. Bush's state of Texas. Latha Krishnaya, president of the Florida PTA, says one of those ideas was the Texas version of the high-stakes FCAT exam. And yes, they do have a high-stakes test called the CAS test. And uh, the children have improved in it every year from everything that I have read. As Republicans open their national convention, the party's nominee for president plans to take Texas, Florida-styled education reforms to a national level, included among the Bush education principles, a free billion dollar fund to double the number of charter schools nationwide. The nominee would financially reward states that improve student performance while penalizing those that fail. Bush wants to publish school report cards on the Internet. And as President George W. Bush will provide federal funding for students to leave failing public schools. Sound familiar? From what we have seen of uh, previous attempts in the Texas legislature, we would assume that, that vouchers are in the mix. Republicans are set to unveil their new education platform Opportunity with a purpose, leave no child behind on the convention floor tonight. Democrats will convene in two weeks. Florida's PTA president hopes both parties will keep children in mind as not votes when dealing with education. Education is not a partisan issue. It should not be about parties or politics. It should be about children. And the Republican vice presidential candidate Dick Cheney has taken some heat for his past votes on education 20 years ago while serving in Congress. Cheney voted to close the Department of Education and also voted against the Head Start program in schools. Now, he says he can support both. Tony, Jennifer? Anyone, thank you. Well, how would you like to talk to the animals, specifically one of the smartest sea creatures around? 
Now there's a place right here in the Sunshine State where you can actually dance with the dolphins, so to speak. We're going to introduce you to one of the star attractions coming up in just a bit. And our meteorologist, Roland Stedham, there are severe thunderstorms to the west and a tropical wave to the southeast, and your forecast is coming up next. The only station with more than 50 years experience covering South Florida hurricanes is also the station with the most extensive network of media partners. Stormwatch 2000. Print. Radio. Radio. Mega 1035. News Radio 610. Big Time 4 FM. Keys Talk 1300 AM. Television. WB39. Pax 35. Whammy. And the net. NBC6.net. Make NBC6 and its media partners your only choice this hurricane season. Everyone feels the need to scratch now and then. You can scratch to your heart's content when you play Cowboy Cash, a brand new scratch-off game from the Florida Lottery. Cowboy Cash is over $17 million worth of prizes, including a top prize of $100,000. Play Cowboy Cash and you'll agree, scratching never felt so good. We're working hard to stop the spread of citrus canker, and we need your help. I'm Agriculture Commissioner Bob Crawford. It's okay to eat your citrus at home, but moving fruit and plant material out of your yard can spread citrus canker like a wildfire. Once the disease is carried into your neighbor's non-infected area, the damage is done, the quarantine area grows. Please help us contain this deadly plant disease. Don't move any citrus or plant material from your property. The 2000 Honda Clearance. It happens only once a year, and it's gone before you know it. Your window of opportunity just opened. The 2000 Honda Clearance. Seize the moment. Hunters, don't miss the big one. Bass Pro Shops Outdoor World presents the Fall Hunting Classic with nine days of our lowest prices of the year on hunting gear, July 29th to August 6th, and four days of hands-on displays and free hunting seminars, August 3rd to the 6th. It's our biggest hunting show and sale of the year. So if you love to hunt, don't miss the Fall Hunting Classic at Bass Pro Shops Outdoor World, I-95 at Griffin Road in Dania Beach. When we gave you some of the top 10 reasons to live at Coral Lakes, the response was tremendous. Now, we'd like to give you the top 10 reasons to live in an Oriel home in the Boynton Beach area. Number 10, Addison Green. Number 9, Majestic Isles. Number 8, Tuscany. Number 7, they're all gated, active adult communities ready now for you to live the good life. And starting at 99.9. .9. Of course, for the other six reasons, you'll just have to see for yourself. Oriel Homes, isn't that reason enough? There's a new place in Florida where you can dive with the dolphins and swim with all sorts of sea creatures. That's right. The main attraction at the unique park is the dolphins. NBC6 reporter Whitney Casey takes a look at the magnificent creatures and how they're trained. Perhaps it's our shared reliance on the sea our common ancestry, or the legendary friendship between lost and lonely sailors. Whatever the myth, magic, and mystery, of all the mammals on the earth, none has inspired our affection as much as the dolphin. <laughs> Breathers of air, strong, agile, devoted to their pods, nurturing to their young, social, playful, and curious, we've only begun to understand the relationship between two extraordinary species. Jenny, the very well-trained dolphin, she really understands what's going on. I think she understands it better than we do sometimes. Jenny's also a 500-pound, 7-foot-long, 22-year-old Atlantic bottlenose dolphin. For years, she's trained as a SeaWorld show dolphin. Now, senior trainer Philip Admire is taking on a new, challenging task, teaching Jenny how to interact with tourists, something she'll do now every day at her new home, Discovery Cove. 
they're still wild animals. We make no mistake about that. We, we, when we're down with them, we're always thinking about that. We're making sure that when we're with them, we're thinking about their behavior. And we're making sure that we're reinforcing the types of behaviors that we want to see when they're with us. Because these are large animals. And even when they're just playing around, they bumped into you. That could hurt. The training process can take months. Here, Philip shows me how Jenny, seeing a simple hand signal, is supposed to present her tail to me. If she didn't, and that's fine. All we're going to do is we're just going to take our hands off her, and we're just going to ignore that behavior for a couple of seconds, and then we're going to go on. Gregarious in nature, dolphins seek attention. And as Philip explains, any type of attention can reward a correct or incorrect behavior. You draw any attention to the behavior you don't want to see, you are reinforcing it. So if you just ignore it, they're finally going to stop doing it because they're not getting reinforced. Why do it? So when Philip sees Jenny's desirable behaviors, like a tickle or a splash, here he rewards her with what's called a primary reinforcer. Oh, yes. Hey, you got a big guy Harry. All right. Jenny's favorite reward is not always food. A good rub down or a playful game is also used to reinforce a new skill. See? That little whistle told her that that's exactly the behavior I wanted to see at that moment. It's a, that's her reinforcement, right? Well, it can be a reinforcement. I can choose for that to be her reinforcement right now, or I can send her over to Mike for some more reinforcement, or I can walk over there and get some reinforcement, or we can just give her a rub down. In fact, when a new behavior is finally learned, as a reward, trainers often give the dolphins another new behavior to figure out. And when they come back, they're all excited. They just did something really great. They come back all excited. Now I'm teaching them something completely new. And they're like, oh, wow, this is great. And they, they're, they're attentive. You can just see their attention just click on you like, all right. And Philip says each one of these tourists entering Jenny's world, young, old, short, tall, red-haired, or brown, all are just a new puzzle for Jenny to solve, a challenge to figure out, and all provide her with a day full of what she loves most, curiosity. And for Philip? Every day of my life, I look at it like this right now. My, my, my worst day at work is someone's best day on vacation. It's a good way of looking at it. Boy, it, it certainly is. That was Wendy Casey reporting, and if you want to swim with Jenny or another dolphin, you can do just that at Discovery Cove. The new interactive SeaWorld Park opened in Orlando just about a month ago. If you want to participate in your own adventure, uh, you can be sure to make reservations and be prepared to spend about $179. And certainly dolphins in captivity is a controversial yes, issue and all of that, but I'll tell you, what a, what a remarkable sight and, and quite an opportunity. Well, a remarkable sight would be a full day of sunshine, but I think Roland Stedham is going to tell us that we have some storms out to the west and a tropical wave coming our way, and uh, it's going to be wet in the next couple of days, right? Tropical wave. Another huh? tropical wave. Yeah, it's not a tropical organized system, not like a hurricane or a tropical storm, but I do see a better chance of showers and thunderstorms developing here over the southeastern coastline of Florida, commencing tomorrow afternoon and possibly into Wednesday as well. Let's take a look at our live shot that we have outside right now. And uh, as you can tell, we certainly have a mix of sunshine, lots of sunshine with a few clouds as well. And we have, for the most part, a scattering of showers here over the southeastern coastline. But most of the big storms are pushed off to the west end of the state. And those storms are going to continue to push off to the west. However, we may see a few isolated showers this evening and tomorrow as well. So here we go with the satellite picture, excuse me, the radar. And notice the southeasterly flow. That flow pushing the showers that we've had throughout the day and with the heating of the day, as those showers move over the peninsula, we're seeing those thunderstorms boiling up, but out here along the west coast. 87 degrees outside right now in Miami, 86 Fort Lauderdale, 87 in Key West, and the high temperature today so far was 90 degrees at Miami. Southeasterly flow, though, means we may also see a couple of isolated showers later on this evening. There's a little cell right there over Miami Beach. But these are severe thunderstorms out here between Naples and Fort Myers. Now, the state of Florida, for the most part, is going to get a little drier tomorrow morning. However, look at this line of showers and storms that we have stretching from the Bahamas and moving right down toward the Yucatan Peninsula. This moisture is going to be on the increase throughout the day tomorrow. So this is why I'm saying we're going to have a better chance of those showers and storms developing tomorrow and possibly lingering into Thursday as well. In fact, our future cast picking up on that moisture and heading it right toward our location. Now, a big trough is in place still across much of the eastern portion of the country, and ahead of that, there's a front. It is stalled from Houston through New Orleans and up toward Alabama, Georgia, and along that frontal boundary is where we're seeing a lot of thunderstorm activity, which is good. We need the rain out there, but it is also causing some problems with severe weather around the Gulf Coast region. My forecast then for the boaters tomorrow, wind is going to be out of the southeast at 15 knots, 
Seas running about two to four feet. Surf temperature at 86 degrees. Scattered showers on the breeze later tonight. Some of these showers may produce a brief downpour, about 78 degrees for the low. Tomorrow, periods of sunshine, especially during the first half of the day, and then a better chance of uh, showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon with highs reaching the upper 80s near 90 degrees. And here's my six-day forecast. Unsettled through Wednesday, and then a strong southeasterly flow takes over on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And if that southeasterly flow is in place, we'll see just a couple of showers through the night and morning with most of the big storms again out to the west. So we'll continue to track that tropical wave, but tomorrow could be pretty unsettled. Tom and Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you. When we return, Joe Rose will be along with all the day sports. We'll be right back. Coming up, profile of Laura Bush preparing to speak to her husband's convention. Also, the wildfire is now more dangerous than ever. Find out why next on NBC Nightly News. NBC 6 News is brought to you by Maroney. When you need a car, call Maroney. 1-877-MAROONI. What's your best deal? Happy wash. Four ninety nine. Yeah, coupon. Oh, early bird special. Five ninety nine. Take care of my baby. That's my car. Do you need a car? AutoNation.com is America's largest virtual dealership. AutoNation.com. Start here. Catch Virginia Tech and Louisiana Tech take on the Canes for just $47. See the Hurricanes face defending national champions Florida State and McNeese State for just $47. For tickets, call 1-800-GO-CANES. Miami Hurricane Football. The attack is back. Where did you get this much? Dental Health Group. Dental Health Group offers quality dental care. Let us brighten your smile with the latest in cosmetic dentistry. Whitening, straightening, that will make your smile make you smile. For the best in affordable dentistry in a caring environment, call Dental Health Group today at 888-83-SMILE. Dental Health Group, ready to get the smile. The NPC6 Neighborhood Weather Mint is brought to you by Bell South, all day on NBC6. players to contenders the past couple of years, but no more. Marlins making a move of their own today, trading for the Cubs outfielder Henry Rodriguez to replace the injured Cliff Floyd. The Fist sending a couple of minor leaguers for O. Henry. Rodriguez batting 251 this season with 18 homers and 51 runs batted in. We thought under the circumstances while the club played, we wanted to at least to show them that we're trying to win as many games as we can, and I think we're in a position where we can finish, finish positive. The club's played well. They've done a good job. We figure that we have a chance to stay competitive. This guy's a proven a major league hitter, uh, very experienced, very professional, great person. Everybody has always said great things about Henry. And the Miami Dolphin is announcing their first depth chart of Camp Wanstead today as they prepare for their first game against the Pittsburgh Steelers this Saturday. And one early surprise in a very heated battle is John Bach starting at right guard, a position where the Finns look to have plenty of depth. It's the same every every year, anywhere you are. I think you always come in and you know there's going to be a competition. You're you're in the NFL, and that's everybody you're playing with is a good player. I think how good we can be in our running game really showed. Um, our passing game needs a little work, but we're only nine days, nine ten days in the camp at the time we went up there, so. I don't think it's something that we have to worry about just yet, but I think it's something that we definitely need to focus on in the next couple of weeks. 
If you're a free agent rookie out of Northern Colorado, you do whatever it takes to be noticed, and that's exactly what linebacker Scott Zimmerman is doing, fighting his way to being noticed in more ways than one. But I need to learn how to, you know, control my temper, and I think that it just gets a little heated out there sometimes, and, and uh, sometimes you just don't think straight, I guess. But I just hope to, uh, you know, really do good on special teams in the preseason games and play good at linebacker. And, take care of my responsibilities and just, uh, you know, try and do my best, and that's all I can really do. That's right, and the NFL making its Monday night premiere tonight. Dennis Miller taking his rants to the broadcast booth for the first time. On tap for the new crew, the 49ers and Dolphins rival New England Patriots. That game at 7 p.m. All right, high hopes down in Coral Gables. The Hurricanes looking to run the table in the Big East, and it's a quest for a national title gets underway. Freshman reporting to practice Saturday. Butch Davis's crew already tabbed as the overwhelming favorite to win the Big East, and now the Canes are looking to prove why. That's a lot of weapons, man. We loaded, you know what I mean? We have guys from everywhere. We have young guys coming in. We have young guys even in there last year. We have a lot of weapons, you know, and I don't want to sit here and speak too fast. But you know, you know there's going to be a lot of guys that show up this year. A lot of guys. Often on both sides of the ball. And time running short for the Miami Heat as the NBA trade deadline looms. The Heat trying to pull off a sign and trade with Charlotte for guard Eddie Jones. If Pat Riley is going to make a move, he's going to have to do it quick. The window of opportunity closes tomorrow. Jones, an Ely High grad, has repeatedly expressed his interest in coming back home to South Florida. That will do it for sports. Back to you guys. All right, Joe, thank you. That's our report for now. NBC Nightly News with Hunt Will Cause next. We'll see you again on PAX 35 at 7 o'clock, and then we'll be back here, of course, tonight at 11 o'clock. We hope you'll join us. Thank you.